Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, December 26, 2018, 6 p.m. here at the municipal offices in uh, the town of South Deerfield. Uh, we'd like to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So everyone knows this uh, meeting is being recorded. Uh, we don't have any minutes to approve tonight, so our first uh, item on the agenda is a one-day special license for Volvo cars. So make a motion to approve the one-day uh, liquor license for um, Carla Katsenzi for Volvo Cars Pioneer Valley, and that would be for um, January 16th. Uh, 2019 for an event they're having to introduce customers to the new owners of the Volvo cars of Pioneer Valley along with um, looking at the new S60 that's coming in Great. so Hitchcock Brewery will be the supplier and I think we have their insurance and all I'll second the motion is there any further discussion no. all those in favor aye, aye. Great. The second item is an MOU with the Franklin County uh, Regional Solid District for pellet bag recycling. I make a motion to approve the um, MOU with Franklin County for the uh, pellet bag recycling. I'll second that motion. Uh, are there, is this to just this. something new? No, we've, we've done this every, well, I think, I don't know if it's every year or every couple years. Is it every year? Printing some things, but yes. Yeah, I think it's every year for the um, for the pellet bag. Do you want me to read any of this? Go ahead, if you want. Okay, so um, this is a memorandum of understanding between the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the Town of Deerfield regarding wood pellet bag recycling sheds. Um, witness that whereas the district received grants through Mass DEP and the Community Innovation Challenge Grant, and whereas the district's grant agreement allows for the purchase and distribution of wood pellet bag recycling sheds and whereas the town has agreed to host a wood pellet bag recycling shed. Uh, therefore, the district and the town now agree to the following terms and conditions. One, the district shall provide a weatherproof uh, shed with doors to collect residential wood pellet bags and uh, to be located at the town's transfer station. Um, the district shall maintain and ensure the uh, wood pellet bag recycling shed and the district shall provide staff to empty the shed on a regular basis unless the town chooses to haul the wood pellet bags to the Greenfield transfer station for consolidation. The town's transfer station attendants will notify the district if the shed needs to be emptied and the district will charge $350 for collection in FY19. And so if you have pellet bags out there, please, please recycle them at the transfer station. Okay. How, how do we... Um, Currently, you know, are we currently uh, recycle other bags of that nature? Or? I don't think we do. What, uh, like what? Like plastic bags, like shopping bags and that kind of thing. I think there's, you know, other than containers at Big Y, unfortunately we don't. We, we really need to do more of that. I, I, I don't, not to discourage this at all, but I saw a special on uh, 60 Minutes last week. That was really disturbing. Oh. And I checked that uh, there's a place, um, where, where I bring a lot of my recycles to, and they ship it off to this place in New York. A lot of these companies send it overseas, where oh, yeah. these people overseas just dump, dump it in, in the ocean. ocean. There's it's miles <coughs> and miles of that yeah. stuff. Luckily, I think um, Franklin I County Solid Waste does a pretty good job of I hope it does reviewing that stuff. They, <laughs> yeah. they do. I, I know that from long experience That's working true. with them. Um, and the choice of vendors that they use. I, if you remember when certified. they wanted to do the book, uh, she very much vets where things go yeah. and make sure it's done properly. And um, whatever happened with here's the book the, thing? Did it? It's there. Is oh, it, it is. Yeah. Okay. That's Roundabout books. Roundabout books. Here's yep. the okay. Here's signature the signature pages. Yes. <clears throat> to that motion, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do you? Two. Do you want to sign a couple, or do you have? A I've got the signature ones here. That's for your your own records. <laughs> Are these duplicates here that we're signing? We, yeah, I we there needed were two, two in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. we needed two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is 
minutes of business card signatures, authorization from the clerk, treasurer, collector, authorization. Um, so this this is um, authorizing Barbara Hancock to be the you know the issuer of cards to different employees that need credit cards um, in town, and I think it was done in 2015, and this is a renewal of that. So um, I could. Uh, I marked I off read the that. resolution for you to read. Yeah, that. so I'll um, resolve. Uh, so this is business card resolution form for the town of Deerfield. Um, resolve that the following officers of this municipality, Trevor McDaniel, select board member, Kip Camosa, select board chair, uh, are hereby authors, uh, authorized and empowered for, in, uh, for and in behalf and in the name of the town of Deerfield, uh, one to execute and deliver to the People's United Bank the business card application for uh, business purposes, um, the agreement setting forth the conditions on which the bank shall on request issue MasterCards jointly in the names of the municipality and authorized employees or other persons for the use in connections with the business, business of this municipality and to um, perform any act and to execute and deliver all instruments and documents which may be deemed necessary to carry out the purposes of the agreement um, and these resolutions. Be it further resolved that each employee or other person designated in writing to the bank at any time for the purposes of the agreement may uh, by and any officer named in the immediately preceding resolution is hereby authorized to use the credit cards issued pursuant to the agreement in the joint names of such employer, employee and other persons in this municipality and to charge purchases for the amount of this municipality by means of such credit cards and in condition, in connection uh, therewith to sign sales drafts on behalf of this municipality evidencing such purchases. Be uh, further resolved, the bank um, that the bank be requested to extend credit to this municipality up to the maximum of $20,000 at, at uh, any time outstanding with respect to charges for the account of this municipality pursuant to the provisions of this agreement. Be it further resolved that the, these resolutions shall have force and effect of a continuing agreement between the bank and this municipality on which agreement of the bank may rely on this municipality shall be bound until the bank is otherwise advised in writing by one of the above named officers of this municipality. And we're, we're um, approving Barbara Hancock, uh, Hancock, our treasurer, to to be that person. Do you want to just make a motion to approve? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the business uh, card resolution form for the town of Deerfield between the town of Deerfield and People's Bank. I'll Be second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Um, with that being said, mm -hmm. uh, is that she signed this. the dollar amount of $20,000 I'm going to take mm -hmm. is, is an overall credit limit, yep. but it does not really authorize or, or, or allow anyone to use that card up to that amount, would it? I think that would be the, the amount on the card, but... Yeah, it's right, the I bank, what the bank extends. Oh, we right, have internal processes for in how much. And I'm sorry, I don't know what that is right now, but okay. it's limited for, okay. you know... Each department head probably, right? right. Okay. So, um, so it would be, uh, let's see, it would just Kip signature, right? I think under this I don't need to sign. I think so. I mean, I have two different documents from her. One has her sign it, and the other has the board. So we're going to go with that. Okay. If if not, we we'll bring else, it back let us again. Know. <laughs> Sounds so, good. Too much information sometimes. Confusing. <clears throat> Actually, if you would just add, um, it, you need to authorize her. Yes, and I, I mentioned that in my okay, motion good. to authorize Bar Barbara Hancock, our treasurer. Good. Yep. Thank you. Twenty twenty. It says liquor licenses, but there's others as well. Yep. Next item is a twenty twenty liquor license renewals and other licenses. Do you want me to read these? Sure. Uh, I don't right have there. It. Okay. Yep. 
think you had the Volvo separate, but it's part of this as well, so you can just do that. Okay. Uh, is there select board renewals for 2019? Class 1 dealers, $150. Uh, Carla Zayek, Volvo Cars of Pioneer Valley. T&M Auto Group. Um, do you want me to list their address as well or no? It's up to you, but no, I don't yeah, think, I don't think so. Uh, class 2 dealers for $90. Uh, Gary and Scott uh, Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment. Uh, number two is Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprises. Three is Richard uh, Bottego. Bottego? Bottego. Somebody correct me. Yep, Richard's <laughs> Automotive. <laughs> um, Joseph Kostick, Jr. is number four, Country Roads. And then Funeral Director, um, $50, is Lawrence Risley and Harold Risley, Risley's Funeral Home. Annual Resident Auctioneer, $100, would be Douglas Billadieu. Uh, Douglas Builders, uh, Douglas um, Auctioneers, LLC. Um, annual non-resident auctioneer is $100. Is um, Michael uh, Bedraitz, Jr., Catamount Auction Company, Inc. And uh, home business renewals of $25 is Elaine Mont, Deerfield Therapeutic, Therapeutic uh, Massage. Uh, Lisa Berger, Deerfield Healing Arts. Uh, attorney uh, number three, attorney. Peter James and Catherine James Consulting, and four, Richard Floyd, uh, Pioneer Frameworks, by the book. Entertainment Yearly, there are uh, three for Yankee Candle. Um, William Swayze is listed as all three. <coughs> and then, do you want to also? I do separate for the Yeah, uh, for, the, uh, for the liquor premise. license. Yeah. yeah. Can you make a motion to approve all of these licenses? Second. And, and also just have uh, to have the office, uh, the office uh, use stamp. stamp. Yeah. Um, right. So the second that. There is one other, I don't know why, but there, I think that there's one missing off the auctioneer one, but. Oh. There's not on this list. Okay. Uh, well, Pat, Check with Pat I on believe it. A, uh, sends out, yeah, let us know who that I, is. I think it was, it's called New England Auctions. Are they uh, outside town? No, they're right on Route 5. Okay. Hmm. Um, Good check for them and mm -hmm. see. Okay. Good add it to next week or next meeting. Yeah. Their address is 220 Greenfield Road. Okay. I just happened to notice that. Yeah. Thank you. There's also a few other things floating out there, people who didn't get the check-in or that, so you yep. might have more to deal with, but it is the end of the year, so. Well, you know, if, if, if they didn't apply for renewal, then True. that right. would yep. be there, so yeah. right. it, it, might not be, it might be their own issue. Um, so I guess I'll, we said all, all in favor, right? Yeah. All in favor, aye? Aye. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, and then there is uh, Cheslick's off-premise yeah. wine and malt license. We'll make a motion to approve um, Cheslick's Market LLC, uh, Nicole Cheslick, for an off an off premise wine and malt beverage license. I'll second the motion. And I'll let you sign that since okay. that hangs on the wall. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's the only one we have from that. Yep. You did. You did most of them last week. Yeah, last meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the complete streets tier two technical assistance grant. So this um, got approval to move to the next level. It's tier two, and with it a contract for um, thirty-two thousand three hundred eight dollars and thirty-seven cents. I don't know the explanation for that amount exactly and how it was arrived at. But I leave, uh, Trevor, can you speak more to it? Would you, I mean, would you like to speak more to it or do you want me to? Um, well, I know this is, you know, our next step in the, in the, um, One more second. Oh, oh, from the bottom there. Um, I think I would, I mean, it, I, I know this is, services. yeah, this is the next step in, in moving forward to that, but I, I haven't talked with Diana specifically about this next contract. So I don't have enough, um, let's see, let me just read this. Uh, this is a letter from them. 
attached. It doesn't say very much. It right. Doesn't say the just, details of the just what we need to do to authorize this stuff. But this is from the state, right? Mass yep. DOT to kind of keep moving on uh, the complete streets. And I just don't know if um, it ends in September 30th. Um, Let me just read this a second here, a new contract. It does all boilerplate. It doesn't really. It doesn't say exactly um, what, what they're me. doing. Um, so I know part of the tier two yeah, is the prioritization plan. Yep. Yes. I think we're keeping the same designer. I'm not totally sure. But mm -hmm. they, they go through and give cost estimates for all of your priorities. And you sort of rank them in terms of which ones you prefer. And is that the 32? Yes. This That's is what it says here. The yeah. funds in this agreement will be for the town to develop a comprehensive streets prioritize, prioritization plan. Is right. this a grant from them for that? Yes. Or is yeah. this our oh, OK. Yeah, good. Because I, I wasn't aware that we were putting up the yeah. money. So I just. We're not. Good. <laughs> and then, yeah, then yay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So, um, so this, I know that the next step was to have the prioritization plan. And I think they, do they have a meeting? I don't, you've gone through this before, I know. but. Um, do they have a meeting where we hear from the public and people put down There's a list of all input that stuff? As part of that, for sure. Yeah, and uh, and obviously we have our our wants and needs um, for moving on getting the Conway. I mean the, the common moving. Yeah. So, so, so you I, need to yeah. um, you you uh, in order to move this forward. The, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how to word this. Whether it would be a concern or whatever, as far as the states. And you're going to ask that ownership to the sidewalks. I think that'll get flushed out hopefully in this process because okay. yes, they do own. Right. There's some people say they own the sidewalks, others they don't. Kevin, I know, he talked with the state one time and said, "Well, your returns come into our sidewalks, and therefore you own the sidewalks." And they said, "Yeah, yeah, you're right." So, I think that does need to get listed in black and white, and who owns what. Right. And I mean, I don't. To me, I guess the only uh, thing that I'd be concerned about is that if the town goes forward to do any work, I don't want the state to come in and say, hey, wait, 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 you, know, you didn't have our permission. Mm -hmm. and, yep. You know, I don't think that they would make That would be very early determination yeah. in the process. Yeah. Yeah, because but they're, it's, it's Mass Dots program, they wouldn't be quite right. familiar with what's going on. So they, you know, yeah. that's, that'll be, as you're right, I think said, it's get flushed out in the process. Right. That clarity about who, where, what, what and can be done. And all the other stuff, who, like, how far over do you own and where the right. owners, because I know Sunderland was working on, they were delaying their meeting because right. they were trying to get clarity you know, about, clarity this, about so. who owns what and how far and getting a right of way to do mm -hmm. sidewalk work in front well, of people. Well, even, property. even the common, because mm -hmm. what we call Park Street, I believe, is 116. Exactly. So, you know. That would be something. The old state and highway. When, whenever this public input does take place, that would be a good question to, mm -hmm. to bring forward to the state people. Well, I think we. I think we can. We should sort that out as soon as possible. Yeah. Because yeah, right. I think a lot, everyone is interested they in the are. answer to that they question. Are. Absolutely. Yeah. Particularly the the building owners. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the f there's a form um, that you would sign. I uh, Kip, I need you to sign that. It authorizes me uh, or mm -hmm. uh, whoever's the town administrator. Here it is. Uh, to sign the contract. Diana's the con contact person. My name would sign the paperwork, and the title will stay with the with this. Yeah, the bottom there. And since Trevor, this is his. You know. Well, it's his. We hope it'll be around. It's his project. <laughs> Keep so, it rolling. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you need a motion on that? Motion to sign. Um, the authorization. The authorization. The so a motion to assign the authorization for the standard contract form with DOT for Tier 2 of the Complete Streets Program. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, letter to the DESE Commissioner regarding the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School expansion. So I could talk to that a bit, or unless you want to. No, it's your. Okay, so. Um, okay. Oh, do you want a copy here? No, I, I have it. You have it? Okay. I just want to make sure I was looking at the same one. Yep. Um, so this is a letter to um, Jeffrey Riley, the Commissioner of Elementary and Secondary Education, every year, it seems. I could be wrong about that. Chinese Immersion School is a charter school in Hadley, and they keep trying to expand. Um, 
and they're requesting to accept up to 952 students. Um, uh, charter schools are extremely detrimental to our public education. Um, I feel strongly about that. I feel if you, um, you know, if you want a different education than what public is providing here, which is an excellent education in Deerfield alone and Frontier, then um, you should pay for it, or or you should, you know, take the five thousand dollars that is awarded to any choice school going, any child going to any choice school, and then fund the difference. Um, but the town, the towns are, and school systems, public school systems are getting. Um, just decimated by by having to put out you know fourteen thousand dollars or more to um, to charter schools when we have no per student, per student um, that that leaves one of our our schools and goes to a to a charter school and um, we have no governance over them we have no oversight it's taxation without representation it's um, it's just detrimental in many, many ways to our school. I'm not opposed to charter schools, but I'm opposed to the way they're funded. Um, and they're just, so any time that they're asking for uh, expansion, I'll, I'll request that they um, be denied until they change the funding system at the state level. So to that effect, um, this was a, I was given a letter by the school, uh, a member of the school committee to bring to you. And I read it and I said, this doesn't have enough information, so I spent more time this getting at some that. of what you've just talked about to get more detail of how it affects. And you know, again and again, it comes back to the funding formula. You know, mm -hmm. putting philosophy aside. Correct. Uh, so I, I edited the letter to make it more related to the funding formula, and the fairness of how it gets the difference between what uh, comes out and what goes back to the local schools when you lose a student. Um, the same letter that I was given was printed in, as a letter to the editor of today's paper from the Conway Select Board. So this will be a little different. Well, I'm glad it's a little um, different. I thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, this is what takes me. That's why I, I do too I, much. I, I know, know, but I, I, I didn't need it to. It means a I lot. Yeah. It means a lot to have it different and to the point and accurate. Yeah, and I, I, I can see the, the need, if you will, for... Um, charter schools and that there's a lot of communities in the Commonwealth or across the country that don't have that good of schools mm -hmm. but what really bothers me is that when you have a community like we have where the people are willing to step up and spend good money for good education Absolutely. pay for good buildings and all the other things that go along with it and that you know if we open our arms and welcome kids in but yet we have to subsidize it because where they're from, their community mm -hmm. doesn't choose to do that. It's so unfair. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, That's I think, school choice. Yeah, well, choice. It's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. That is the same. It's related. Same yeah. It's yeah. related. You yep. know, and I, I almost think that it's better that communities have the choice to say, look, we're just not going to participate. You know, we'll take care of our own kids and, mm -hmm. and go well, on. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't have that. I, I mean, can you imagine <laughs> if, I mean, if you, we do it here at public schools. Well, how about if you... Uh, Say your kid graduates from Frontier and say, you know, I, I'd like my kid to go to Harvard. So it was going to cost me forty grand to go to UMass. So I'm going to choose Harvard instead. And, well, here's your forty thousand. Yeah, it, it'd laugh you down. Mm -hmm. But yet somehow we seem to do that in this arena, and it's mm -hmm. it's really not fair. Yeah, especially when we provide such a good education with all kinds. I mean, yeah. I've been looking at this issue since I got on the school committee four years ago, and it, it um, when I was on the Collaborative for Education Services that we did a big study there and it's in every every um, ed, you know ed, education conference that I've gone to it's a huge issue um, it's just and for other communities that lose you know huge percentages I mean we, we lose a lot there are some communities that lose so much more and, and I don't know how they're going to keep their schools funded because it's such a huge amount of money and it's not just you know it's not like oh this is only my money it's you know, it's my child, my money. But once, once you get a group of that, you know, a hundred, four hundred thousand dollars leaving one district to go to a to a essentially a private school that doesn't have the same rules, doesn't have the same um, oversight that you know our elementary school has to come before the town, or Frontier has to come before the town and justify their budget, and they don't have to at all. Well. I mean, I haven't been involved with this like you, Trevor, but how, I know that I, I see like even our governor promotes this a lot. Uh, exactly. And how, how do we get our message across that, you know, it's, it's just it's not tough. right? It is tough. It's really hard because you're right. In some communities, 
the schools are underperforming, and, um, but, but the fix for that isn't to create a secondary education system that's only allowed, right. you know, some people get to go there and the rest of the people, the funding that they desperately need gets sucked away to just a few kids. Right. It's it just, it's creating a, well, a two-tiered education it, system in public education. It's just not fair. There is another option under, and I don't know why, I don't think we have any schools in Western Mass that are Horace Mann schools. Right which um, would keep the accountability there. I think that's Correct. the main difference. Mm -hmm. um, they're more like uh, what were called magnet schools, I think, that were within a school system, but provided yeah. a more tailored, different kind of education focused on arts or science yeah. or whatever. Um, and w there are several around the state, but I don't there think are. there are any west of I agree. Worcester, I think right about if that. that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the, but the funding formula is the issue, it, which it is. is why I, why Thank I you. edited okay. this because that's really the, the challenge. You yep. know, it's okay. Um, so um, I, I move I have that we sign this letter. Thank you. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Here it is. Do you have one? Oh, okay. Right. Right. I can send that to the newspaper if you'd like. I'd or. love that. Thank you. But I would go to DESC and the school committee and perfect. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Do we have any new <laughs> business to speak of? <laughs> put it down um, well, I was. Yeah, I could. Wait I, a minute. <laughs> oh do you, no, we have another. Uh, oh, your letter's not on the. Uh, it's not. Oh, no, it's, it's not on the agenda. Yeah, right. that's in your report. Okay. Um, so. Oh, I have the DEP. Oh, you do. Okay. Yes. So I guess I'll I'll bring this up here because um, I was going to do this under uh, board of health um, and announcements, but um, so we have a, um, obviously we've been talking about our sewer system for a long time. Um, we've, we're in the middle of the study and kind of getting things hopefully rolling to do some repairs. Well, in the meantime, we have a, um, a consent order from DEP to fix the clarifier quicker than our plan of doing it over the next couple of years. Last year, during the ice, when it got really, really cold, the clarifier froze up and bent the arm. You're probably aware of all this. So um, DEP has noticed that and said that we need to fix that in 90 days. There isn't a fix in 90 days. Um, we have no secondary clarifier. So the only way that we understand to fix this is to put in temporary clarifier tanks, drain it down and replace the clarifier. So. I, I'm part, I'm, I guess my comment on this is just to kind of give a heads up that something more is coming. I talked to Dave just before Christmas. Um, he's putting together a bullet point of kind of what this says. This, there are many issues on here that have been cleaned up. So I think once we got this, uh, I think there are seven, seven items here. Um, all of them have been taken care of except for the clarifier arm, which isn't an easy fix. And, I think this was, there's a guy in, is it Dave from Sunderland who's on the, in the DEP? I'm not sure the names right now, but there's a guy that Dave works with in Sunderland that works for DEP, has run a plant before. And when it's, you say Dave? Dave, uh, Dave Prickett. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, and he, uh, I get, and there's another guy now who, who comes around and checks stuff. Well, I think gentleman in Sun that works at DEP has run a plant before and understands the longevity and like like how to run a plant and how you can't just shut the thing down and fix it in 90 days so Dave, um, Dave Prickett's working with him to try and get a calendar of events of what's reasonable what can, what can we do we we can't use those square clarifiers um, they don't work um, and it would cost a lot of money to get them up to speed so the thought was to put um, a, a temporary clarifier tank in, mm -hmm. divert the liquid to that, drain the clarifier, pull the guts out, fix it. Um, Kevin had talked about a company that does this specific work where they'll come in, get all their measurements, build the whole clarifier in their warehouse, number everything, take it all down so that you, you're only down for a short amount of time replace all the guts of the clarifier in the arm, and then um, 
get you back up in the speed a lot faster than you normally would. Apparently this project takes typically like a year. They can do it a lot faster than that. So I'm, st I'm waiting for the, the um, advice from, from Dave Prickett and others as to what can be done and what, what DEP is requiring us to do. The last page actually has the four items. The last page of this? Yes. Okay. I just got this, so I haven't read it yet. Um, right, within 30 days of date, uh, I shall submit alarm and sledge reports. I think that's been, I think the four things have been done. It's just the clarifier arm is the last. Uh, is, uh, yeah, yeah, repair the swing arm. It's number two. I think all the others have been completed. I think uh, Keith got this on a Friday, and by Saturday, I think a lot of this was done, but. Um, but it's the clarifier arm that is that is going to be the hard thing. So um, Dave's thought was to maybe do you know to do this as a as a phase one A, and it's reworking what we we're kind of planning on doing because we have this. The benefit of this is this puts us in a lot more favorable light as far as the grant we're going after. Um, that's a you know it's an awful way to get get a grant, but well, um, it puts us in better light for one. Have you heard any dollar amounts? For Not yet. For everything? Not yet. It, it seems to me. I mean, I understand the ninety day thing, but I also understand that you know I'm sure that even a DEP, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. realize that you know you just can't shut this thing down and go. I mean, this is an ongoing, detrimental to the river. Well, yeah. it, it flows constantly. Mm -hmm. I. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> if you no. don't, if you don't move forward, yeah, I'm sure. But right we, now, I think what happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor. I had I gave this to him back then, and he said, "Oh, great, um, great." Being this could be helpful to moving the grant along, and he thought um, that it would be helpful in that way. And apparently, they're uh, more concerned about it. Um, as an, a, a real potential for failure than he had anticipated, and mm -hmm. that, had, I think, uh, had been anticipated generally. So this is newer information about this. Um, I wish we had more to yeah, talk Dave's about gonna tonight. Yeah, going to have more, hopefully. Uh, he was just all right around Christmas that he, I think, was more aware of the consent order. That, well, um, I gave this to him. Yeah, in, so in I'm October. not sure where it, where it came, because at our last meeting, he thought, well, Kevin and Keith thought he knew about it, but he hadn't, or I forget how the conversation went, but he said he'd jump right on it. He did, and I think when I talked to him the day before Christmas, he said um, he's going to get us a bullet point of what, what he thinks needs to be done talking with DEP, how to stretch this out a little longer. I, yeah, I, 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 where I was thinking before is that, uh, you know, the, the clarifier, not saying that it's simple, it's not as complicated as other components, mm -hmm. and I, I would be more in favor of just starting construction on the new one adjacent to this because there's there's room for that. And then I, when you get the new one up and running, then you can dismantle the the old one and you could refurbish it, and then you'd have two. Was that's our ultimate goal? Completely but you know, agree, but I don't think they're going to let us. I don't think well, they're going to give us the time unless they do. Yeah. I mean, that's the goal, and that yeah. was what we were hoping to do. Yeah. So. That's and and I, I continue, every time I read some of these things, I, I see that our, our chief operator talks about the main problem is rags getting into the system, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it just really irks me that we just don't buy that channel cleaner, and we can get rid of 90% of that stuff today. And it's, it, there's no downtime to it, you know. I mean, once, once that's on site, you slide in, it's up and running in a matter of hours. Um, but, hmm. And this, and this it, 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 everything is our aeration. Is, is a problem with the rags, you know, it gets know. intertwined around the motor. The electric bill's spiking and breaking. Please, public, stop putting rags and flushable wipes <laughs> right. down the toilet. They're not, they're not, they're not flushable. <laughs> they're not flush, even though they flush and they go down, they wreak they havoc. I think I've posted some stuff on, on the website or on our Facebook page that well, shows new, some of that balls of that. There's other things. Some of these new Dental toilets, floss. Teddy bears are flushable too, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sneakers apparently are flushable. <laughs> But those didn't go down there either. Uh, do, do we have a particular date in the near future to meet with Dave? I, mean, I kind of thought we were. Uh, I'm hoping to hear. I he just called while we're in the meeting, so I'm hoping to find out and get another date soon. Um, okay. I think this all kind of 
push things forward. So he, I think, was completing the um, application, and I believe that's just about done. And um, so I'll have a better date, for, certainly by the 9th, when we okay. meet again. All right. So Any, just to get it on your radar. Anything sure. we hear, I'll make sure the whole yeah. board knows. Yeah, and give okay. it to give it to um, to all. So all right. get on top of it. Um, the administrator's report. Of course. I'm oh, just going to say I have a letter in your folder um, about my um, resi resigning and shortly thereafter uh, retiring. Um, I don't really want to read it, but I would if you want me to. No, no. <laughs> That's fine. So just to sum it up, yep. that um, um, I picked this date February 7th because um, it was, uh, Diana's going to be away like a week and a half before that, so I'd be here and we continue to work together and learn transition and all of that. So um, I'm recommending, as I said last meeting, that you um, uh, keep Diana on as the interim town administrator. She's so familiar with uh, who and what and what, you know, all of that, uh, deeply into it. Um, and I think that would work well for us moving through the budget season and town meeting and all of that. So, um, so I, okay. that would be my 30-day my, uh, notice, plus 30 plus day notice, although I've been talking about this. Um, so. Well, thank you. Can, um, so with regret, I accept this. Um, letter of resignation, and um, we'll have many. More. I've, I'm I'll assuming many back. more meetings back. in yes, between. But yes, um, there's some time. thank you for all the time to teach me. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And it was very nice. The letter does talk about, um, you know, how how dedicated our people are in town here, and how much you've enjoyed working with the professional teams that are here, and the different department heads, and all all, all through the town. So. I, I would just like to say, and I did say this in the letter, that I don't think um, our town employees are recognized, you know, putting aside the compensation schedule, are recognized in other ways. And I would just encourage folks who are listening out in the community and, and other, particularly other uh, volunteer officials who I also thank for all their time they give, um, to do what you can to recognize um, the folks who work in this building that regularly interact with the public. I don't I don't think you can overdo that. It's true. Scoot, scooting back to Dave Prickett a second. Do you want me to read? <laughs> what am I? A rag? No, I don't. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fine. work, work goes fine. on, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. That's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to mention, because I, I did get hear back from him, said that um, the USDA RD uh, application is 99% complete ready to go with a couple of key updates based on our last meeting. Um, the plan continues to be uh, to move forward with phase one wastewater upgrades project uh, over FYs 19, 20, and 21, subject to funding, financing, authorization. Um, our, you know, again, our opinion of probable cost for phase one adjusted per the construction schedule is approximately 11.5 million. Um, one recent wrinkle, the town recently received an order by Mass DOT to upgrade the town's loan clarifier at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, Mass DEP proposed a deadline of January 2019 for the repairs. I don't know how to do that. Um, we've been in discussions with Dan Krupska, Dan, it's Dan of Mass DEP right. since that time. Uh, we explained the town's needs, um, more time to facilitate appropriation, procurement, design, bidding, and construction. We anticipate subject to your input um, on timeline and funding that we will formally respond to the Mass DOP in writing, um, requesting a timeline of December 2019. Uh, so hopefully mm -hmm. there will be, a, 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 you know, um, we recommend the town try to set up a a date for a special town meeting ASAP anticipated articles for the uh, special town meeting would be a appropriation for the conceptual design of the South Deerfield water treatment plant approximately 85,000 and be appropriation of the cost for the clarifier upgrade cost to be determined 
and if applicable, appropriation for the cost of the balance of the phase one upgrades project. Um, last item could be determined, uh, could be deferred until the annual town meeting if preferred by the town. Um, he's uh, in the process of preparing a task order to assist the town uh, with the consent order. Um, but in the meantime, we have been continuing to assist the town with the front uh, with the front end of these requirements uh, as per our continued good faith efforts to help Deerfield with the wastewater related matters. So, just a quick send that to on me. That. And Kevin. I will. I will forward that to you. Just have to determine whether we do need a special town meeting or we can wait. To right. Right. I know that Barb, uh, Brenda was trying to get a hold of Tom and. And that's uh, just for other, before Tom Scanlon right. about other funding stuff, questions, so. Okay. She's out this week, so. We'll yep, oh, good. Oh. Not so good, good for well, her. <laughs> good for her, yeah, it was good yes. people had some You're all time set, or you? I'm yeah. all set, You're yeah. all set. Uh, One thing I wanted to bring up was about our building inspectors. Um, I guess we're in the middle of January, we're gonna be interviewing or speaking to some people about this. Um, I was talking with Mr. Kalaszewski, and after the first year, he's going to have a bit more time and things have slowed down, so I didn't know if it would be appropriate at this time to uh, give a letter to Mr. Jensen and, and thank him for his uh, service and have him, um, I don't know if you want to call it, uh, an expiration date to his thing of January 10th. That would be two, a little well, more, two weeks. I think what I would, I, you know, this is, I have to think for two seconds. Okay. What I think I would do yeah, is I would wait. I don't think we, um, there's no uh, notice terms that we need to give. Okay. But I think it would be safer at this point. My first reaction is to see how the process um, proceeds with candidates, uh, you know, to start there and keep, did, keep you know, f unless there's other reasons to have him there. Did we get to keep him there? We got candidates to look um, at? We had three, and we're, we're looking at um, two of those three oh, as, as uh, meeting the requirements. So, okay. Um, and then, you know, I'd recommend it just starting that process mid-January. Okay. One okay. of them, one of the candidates who meets it, it will, will not be available until mid-January anyway for an interview, so. Okay. Um, my only thought for that, Wendy, was that I, I was unaware that it, whether there was a, a notice well, you had to give a notice. But since, you know, Dick... There is I, that will employee. All right. Well, I, I spoke to Dick about it. And he said, things are slowing while the inspections are, a lot of them are done. And just to be fair to David, I thought we just gave him, you know, say, look, you know, around this time, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll be set. But, mm -hmm. um, certainly Dick could tell him that, okay. you know... All right. Or we, you know, we should, Dick and I are supposed to sit down and have a... Uh, transition plan is the term that uh, he's been talking about, Carolyn's been talking about. So okay. we, we can talk about that as well and see okay. what he's got, um, okay. what his thoughts are. Okay. All right. Uh, next, uh, is there any public comments this evening? Thank you for coming, Rocky. Yeah. Good to have you here. Is it Schwartz weather? I, was just <laughs> I know. <laughs> it never is for me. <laughs> oh, I guess that's it. So. Uh, Connor, do you have anything you'd like to add? I don't. So, okay. Welcome, Connor. I enjoyed meeting everybody it's really, the first week. Really good to have you around and um, thanks for getting to meet everybody. And very much excited you're here. Thank you very much. Me too. He laughs at my jokes. <laughs> um, really, thank you. Um, well, you're meeting on the 9th. Meeting and on the 9th. we will have two sets of minutes by then. We okay. We'll have the minutes that were on the agenda. And I think um, November 28th will be the other. Of minutes. Okay. Um, we're waiting to hear CONCOM is supposed to meet tomorrow night, but we're waiting for confirmation from another member to make sure there's a quorum. Uh, and at your next meeting, you should vote to fill the two seats okay. uh, on the CONCOM. So be prepared. All right. I wrote to the three candidates that we had last time, and I've only heard back from one saying that he still he remains interested. Okay. And if you'd want to handle this any different way, you should discuss that and, you know, make it, open it up or just mm. leave it to the three um, or however you want to do that. Okay. Why don't we just talk about then and see who shows up and we can go from there. Okay. Uh, well, well you, we need to, we need to point people. I mean, okay. yeah, we need will to. Point them. So we we'll point them on the ninth. But, yeah. Okay. So I, sh uh, I may should reach contact. out to you for 
for um, information between now and then. Okay. Um, but I think I know the three that have Right, but I only looked. know one of them is interested at this point. Again, okay. you know, probably did this uh, yesterday yeah. and it okay. feels like a week ago. Right. I'll give okay. it some more time and if I don't hear closer to that date, yep. um, I will, you know, we may not have okay. three enough. Well, okay. we need two. Right. To, you, least, you need to point two. And we have one for sure that has said yeah. they Unless want Unless this, this other uh, member of the CONCOM who misses meetings is not interested in continuing. Well, no. we'll find out by yes. then, right? Yes, Louis Mission, okay. if you're you're listening, please check in tomorrow. Okay. Great. Motion. To oh, adjourn. motion to adjourn. Oh, I wanted to just. I'm glad everybody had a wonderful Christmas. I hope they all did and have a wonderful New Year's. No, um, be safe out there and be safe. I think Deerfield PD is going to have extra patrols on. Wonderful. New Year's Eve, so keeping us safe. I did yeah. see that they received a grant for um, impaired driving, so they're going to have some funding next year for. Um, I know with some of the funding last year, they were able to get, after they did their, whatever was required of the grant patrolling and that kind of thing, um, they were able to secure some funding for those slow down signs at the schools. And I, I think their plan is hopefully to buy a couple more of those with the, with the grant money. Um, and also the hours to do the, you know, impaired driving. Um, so that was good news. I'm, I'm glad they're always looking for grants to, to keep us safe. So thank you to them. Also on your, sorry. No, yeah, also. Um, on your ne well, speaking of uh, impaired, um, <laughs> at your next meeting we will have the hearing. Your meeting's at 6, but we'll have a hearing at 7 on the medicinal marijuana. This board needs board to health. also do yep. a special permit for that. So, okay. And that's for the um, 198 Mill Village. Mill Village, okay. The son's proposal. Anybody know why Mill River was shut down today? Was it the... I heard that on Facebook somewhere that somebody had said that the, road, Mill Village? the Mill Village Road was shut down, and I didn't know if that culvert We've, had blown out with all that uh, rain did again. Did not hear. Okay, anything. just curious. If anyone heard? I didn't hear. Just because you it's read it on again, Facebook. It may not be true. <laughs> <But> <laughs> no, I think somebody had to turn around, so they were like, "It's broken." So, all right. Um, yeah, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you.